Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Let's say first when we come fresh, right? There is a file called as services.log. But initially, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say this has exceeded 100 kV, right? So what you do, this services.log will be copied into services1.log. Okay, it's renamed as services one dot log and it creates a empty file with name services dot log. So uh, it cuts from the services dot log and puts into services one dot log. Okay. So this is the second stage. And when this again becomes full, right? So what happens? The services one will become two. And the services dot log will be copied into services one dot log and it creates a new fresh services dot log. Okay, let's say we have max backup as three. So, and what happens when it again becomes full? This three, two will become three, one will become two, and this current file will be backed up in services one dot log, and it creates an empty file services dot log. Okay, and we have maintained only three, right? Then this again exceeds. What happens? It discards the services three log. Two becomes three and one becomes two. And the current one will be back up as services one dot log and it creates a new file. So what happens here? When it exists, this will be removed. Because I'm sorry. This because we have mentioned the maximum backup files are the only thing, right? Mm -hmm. So in the end, at least we will be having a file which has all the logs into it. No, the older logs will get deleted, right? Now the services three dot log this will be discarded, right? In that yes. case, we still have services two dot log. Yes, we still have the older logs get discarded. The recent one will be uh, will be persisted. Okay. okay. Whenever we discard, we discard the older one. Mm -hmm. The log push discards the older one. Okay, thank you. Okay, now if you have any questions before we start the script. Any questions? Okay, so what is build script? Could anyone tell me what is build script? Folks, what is build script? So we will compile uh, our program. Uh, I mean, we do a uh, lot of uh, definitions to create. Uh, you have to pick up uh, things from dar file and. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone else? Start file for deployment. Okay. Compile the source code, create a jar file, and deploy it. 
like a scripting language, uh, shell scripting. Based on uh, based yeah, it's on not a shell script. It's a scripting language. It's a script, it's a script language, mm -hmm. and it's built on uh, Java. It's uh, made up of Java. Okay. Basically, this language is built on Java. Okay. The build tree basically works. We have a project, right? We have the project here, but when you, where should it get deployed, right? This project has to go in a servlet container. It could be Tomcat or WebLogic or Web, right? So finally, we have to compile the Java classes and we have to keep the necessary, you know, uh, views like like JSPs or you know any other dependencies. And all those things have to be moved to the server, right? We'll have an var or EA or file that we deploy in it, right? So the build script is actually responsible for the creation of it. So it compiles the classes as you know, as the people already mentioned, yes, it compiles the classes. And finally it bundles it into a var or EAR file, right? So the po the most popular build steps that are used are and and maven. When we use and, we will be having a build.xml file, which actually contains the script. And it looks like this. This, this is an example of a build script. So it's an XML file, as you see, and the root tag is the project. So it has a project name and the base directory is whatever the directory references that we make will be treated from the current directory. Or else we could specify any base directory also. When we say dot, it is referred from the current directory in which this file is present. And there is something called as a default, right? So it's a target. So an AMP file, we have different targets. So targets are a kind of analogous to our methods. So if you have different methods to do different functionalities, right? So the same way, they, these targets inside the AND build file, they are analogous to methods. Each target has a specific functionality to achieve. So there is no rule that, you know, the target name has to be usage or compile or, you know, deploy or, Something like that. There is no rules for it. This is the name, whatever we want to give it, like a method name, right? Method name, we can give whatever we want. But we try to give the name of the method meaningfully so that the name of the method explains what the method does, right? So, in the same way, when we are compiling the Java classes, right? When we are co compiling the Java classes and generating the class files, we are composing, right? So, usually, we name the target as compile, right? But there is no rule for it to name targets as compile or deploy. We just give names, whatever makes sense for us. So, in a build.xml XML file, you see multiple targets, right? Each target has a functionality to it. This target, the name of the target is usage, and what it does, echo. When you say echo, what happens? It just writes to the console. It, it just displays whatever the message we are echoing, it just writes. It, it's not doing anything. This is one target that we have here. And okay, before jumping on to dog export, the builder XML file, th there are some properties that we want to use, right? Where is your source code? After the compilation, where, where do you want to keep your classes, right? The source directory, the build directory, you know, the name. The, is there are some property properties that you want to get it, right? So you could declare them as properties here, right in the build.xml file, or we could load the properties from the from any property file. Here we have a builder property file wherein we have some properties here. JDBC properties and you know we have some properties. So the properties which are defined in this property file will be available to the builder XML file. We just use the property. If it is a file, we use the attribute file to specify the property file name or 
we give the name of the property and the value of the property as a key value pair. And here is what is called as a part, right? Usually, folks, whenever we were learning, like starts of spring, right? We always highlight on saying, right? Whenever you are using a third party framework, we need to have those jar files that are using spring. We need to have the spring jar file in the project build part of the class part, right? Add it to the project class part, right? So whenever we are compiling through the script, we'll see, you know, where exactly we're compiling it. What are we writing for the compilation? But when it is compiling, it has to know about the class path, right? It has to know about what is the path or the class path, right? This path. So we give an ID for it so that this path could be used anywhere else. In this path, we include several jar files. What are we saying here? We are saying a file set and we are saying in the web directory. What is the web directory? Web content, web inf, list, right? Usually these kind of things, right? Because ant is the root or, you know, the starting most uh, before maven and all those things. So whenever we use this kind of notation, right? We call them as ant notations. I mean, those are not like, you know, uh, patternized by and or something, but as and has come before, we just use it as you know, star dot jar means all the jar files that are present in this specific folder will be included. So in the web content, the web INF, lib folder, you have several jar files, right? So the string web MDC, server JPI and all this thing. Right? So it includes all the jar files. And what will we did in the app server list? whatever the name of the jar file starts with the third line, we are including all those things. And in the class path, we are keeping all the classes also. So actually, the, in the in the builder directory, we have the classes folder. So all the Java files will be compiled and they will be present in here. So how are we exactly achieving this? We're going to see it in a different target. But this is the part wherein we are putting all the jar files and all the classes that are needed. It's a path. We're giving an ID for it so that this path could be reused using this name. And then we created a target usage, which echoes, you know, different. I mean, it just tells how to use it. If you want to build application, use build. If you want to deploy the application, you know, deploy application. If you want to deploy the application as a war file, use the target deploy bar, right? It gives all the things. And folks, usually before doing a build, right, it's advisable to clean. What do we mean by cleaning? We delete all the class, all the class files. So, you know, whenever it's compiled, right, once it's compiled, we have the dot class files here, right? Sometimes they doesn't get overwrite when we recompile, right? And when we compile again and try to overwrite it, right, sometimes the overwrite doesn't happen properly. So it's always advisable to delete these things and, you know, before starting the compilation. So we use a clean. We, had, we create a clean target. What does it take? This is a target. It's like a method. So what are we doing in it? We're doing a delete. We have the delete tab to do a delete. So we're saying the file set, the directory as build or directory. So it, it looks in the property. So what is the build on directory property? It's web content. Web there is sub content, web in a class. So whatever the contents that have in class. We we're not asking it to delete the entire entity. So we're asking it to delete the dot class files inside the classes directory. Build dot directory is nothing but web content within a class. So it deletes the class. And there is something called as an undeploy, right? So what does it do? You have a deploy dot path, right? What is this deploy dot path? Let me look into the problem.
so many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are you will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com on our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are the courses that we offer what each course covers also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770 Seven 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 one two six nine. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at zero two zero three three seven one seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.